Hi everybody, I'm Todd McKim and welcome to CalBears.com. This week the Bears travel to Salt Lake City for another night game as they take on the Utes of Utah and their outstanding defense led by the nose tackle star Lodo Tulele. This guy could be one of the top players selected in next year's NFL draft. They're an outstanding running back in John White. But they're probably smarting still from last year's whooping by the Bears at AT&T Park. The Bears winning that game 34 to 10. They had four sacks. The Bears held Utah to minus six yards rushing in the first half and would love a repeat performance come Saturday night in Salt Lake City. Uh, Utah's second uh, leading defense in the conference, a very physical group up front. We'll have to do a better job of blocking at the point of attack. With their offense, you, from an inside perspective, you got to be really sound on your keys. They, they have a pulling offense. They do a lot of pullers. Um, and then also, uh, they have a really good running back. Um, uh, so you, we're going to have to be sound on the inside on our keys and what we're looking at. You know, they have a young quarterback who's getting better each and every week. Looks like he's gaining confidence. A big, tall guy who has very good vision. Uh, been pretty accurate throwing the football. And then, uh, you know, White is always a, a threat running the football. We have the confidence. We know what we can do. You know, we've come out in some games when we've just been on fire, so we know, we know it's there. We know the confidence is going to be there. You know, obviously, you know, play a tough game like we had last week. It'd be easy to get that confidence down, but, you know, we're just going to keep grinding because we know, you know, like I said, we know we have the talent on the team, and we know that we have the physical attributes that we need. We just need to execute and kind of put it all together. It's, it, it's a spread look, but with a great tailback and a, and a big offensive line, they, they can do some damage on the ground running it. So uh, it's not uh, – a spread team where you're looking for pass. It's a spread team where you have to really respect the run first and then look at your pass drops. And when I've seen some, some games on TV, very loud, very hostile environment. They take a lot of pride. You know, they put that thing up every legal procedure. They put a five-yard deal up along the, along the uh, stands there. So it's uh, – they take – and I understand it's what they call the blackout game, so they'll all be – you know, they'll be revved up and ready to go. Yeah. So it'll be the Bears and the Utes Saturday night from Salt Lake City. And the Bears are also hoping for a breakout performance offensively after struggling against Stanford, scoring only three points in that game and only three yards in total rushing as well. A tough performance all the way around. But if they get the ball to Brendan Bigelow, and they have occasionally this year, there's a chance for a big play. We call him Big Play Brendan. And here's his story. At 5'10", 190 pounds, Brendan Bigelow might not be the big man on campus or even the biggest guy on Saturdays, but he is definitely one of Cal's big play players. With touchdown runs of 81 and 64 yards against Ohio State and a 24.4 yards per kickoff return average, the Central East High School product from Fresno can kickstart a contest in the return game. It's a rush. You know, I'm, I'm like, man, okay, I'm trying to put it in the zone. I'm trying to at least or get at least a lot of yards for the offense to get started. But it's, it's, a, it's a thrill. I'm looking at the, the kickoff team come towards me. And then I'm looking at the ball come towards me. I'm looking at all of that. So when I get the ball, my first reaction is to think, make the first guy miss. And then see what you can do after that. And then after that, just kind of read it out. That's it. All this almost didn't happen as Bigelow suffered two major knee injuries in high school, one of which kept him from playing his entire senior season. It was very hard. Like, I didn't think I was actually going to even continue after I tore it the second time. So, like, all I was thinking in my mind was, you know, if I do get a second chance, which my dad, you know, bounced back and said, let's do it again. You know, that kind of motivated me to continue to keep going and keep pushing and make, getting better at it and uh, working my way up. And despite showing flashes during his freshman season, it was not until this year that the knee felt close to 100 percent. Like last year, it was, I was going through the ache and pain and stuff, the stiffness, and it's just, it was just horrible. And I had to get kind of get through that. But uh, I kind of pushed through. I was like, man, when is this thing going to ever get better? And it did, and you know, now I'm here. You know, I appreciate the game a lot more. I, I actually got a second chance to play. So that's just, it's, it's awesome, man. And uh, you know, I thank the God, the God up above, man, I, to make this happen for me. And um, you know, I cherish every moment of it. As Kelly Clarkson would sing, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and stand a little taller. 
Right now, Brendan Bigelow at 5'10 is standing pretty tall. Joining us now is volleyball coach Rich Feller. A uh, big weekend coming up. You got back at home. I get six of the last ten matches at home. And it's also the start of the second half of conference play. So it's kind of the stretch drive for your team, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Uh, you know, it, it gets to be kind of a grind at this time of year. Um, but it's good to kind of look back and go, now we're playing teams for the second time. We know what they can do to us and what we can do to them. And, you know, having the Arizonas in the first weekend back home is kind of nice because we're familiar with them. And it was one of our successful road trips, at least partially successful. So we're looking forward to playing those two teams again. Yeah, you got the Wildcats first. And that, that was a big match for you down in Arizona where you kind of collectively had a a session on Saturday to, to put the Arizona State loss behind you and get ready for Arizona. Your team played one of its better matches of the year. We really did. You know, we started out a little slow um, and dropped the first set, even though we felt we should have won it. And then we really caught fire and won the next three sets pretty easily. And uh, a couple of players had some outstanding numbers offensively. And hopefully we can regain that. We watched that match again uh, in preparation and saw what we did well and saw what we could do even better. It's also a team that you're tied with in the conference standings. And, you know, at this point in the season, not only are the standings important, but also you, you're trying to make a run for your 11th consecutive trip to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's no hiding that pressure. The team feels it. The coaches feel it, obviously, on both sides. And, uh, you know, you have to finish above 500 to get a bid for the tournament. And so both Arizona and Cal, we're both fighting to get to that point and let somebody else make the decision for us, you know, if, uh, if it's possible. And then on Sunday, not only is it Arizona State, a very good team, a team that uh, won down in Tempe, but it's also kind of the pre-Halloween festivities, costume. I mean, you have a costume planned at all? Are you going to come out with the, the normal attire? Uh, you know, we'll see. Maybe I'll have a little surprise uh, accessory, let's say. <laughs> Well, good luck this weekend, uh, Arizona on Friday, Arizona State on Sunday, and we'll talk to you next week. Okay, thank you very much. All right, the volleyball coach Rich Feller is the Bears host Arizona and Arizona State to begin the second half of Pac-12 conference play. Well, a couple of reminders. First of all, join Kathleen So each and every week for, we call it Twicka, this week in Cal Athletics. Uh, a nice feature this week about the 1982 Cal football team, of course, the 30th anniversary of the play. So check that out every week. She's doing a nice job with that. And a reminder for the radio broadcast, we will be on the air for the Utah game starting at 5.30 Pacific time. That's 5.30 Pacific time with the Toyota Tundra tailgate show, followed by the countdown to kickoff, and then the actual kickoff at about 6.45 Pacific time. I'm Todd McKim. Thanks for joining me this week. We'll see you next week on CalBears.com.